Last time we managed to crash the boat two times. First, we hit the wall when entering the lock. And then, we gently touched a plastic fender named Juno and scratched a little bit of paint. And also such things are kind of expected when you learn to maneuver a 25 meter long keeled single engine vessel without a bow thruster and no harm or real damage was done. The self-confidence was scratched away like the paint of that yacht. Not the best start for the very challenging task we are facing now. Hello, it is so good to see you again. This video will be all about taking our ship out of the water and it will be the first time that we take out a boat of the water for us. So this is really exciting. And to get to the yard we have to get through a very narrow channel where all alongside this channel very expensive yachts are moored and we should not hit any of them. So also that will be really tricky and really challenging and we really thought about taking another yard because we don't want to go through this channel. But it was the best yard we could find, so we decided to take that one. When we make it to the shipyard, the next challenge is to get the boat out of the water. And it will be the very first time for us to take a boat out of the water. And to do it for the first time with a 25 meter ship and just the two of us aboard is really tricky. But we hope we will manage it. Hi, we are Daniel and Barbara. The last years we spent sail racing against the best sailors in the world. But we always dreamed of living on a traditional ship and sailing the ocean. So we bought this huge 82 feet ship in need of a serious refit. We want to restore her and convert her back into the beautiful sailing ship she once was. The trawler you've just seen is 90 meters long, so about 6 meters shorter than our vessel. And to compensate for the missing 6 meters, she comes equipped with a bow thruster. So you see, going through this channel is quite a challenge for us. And on top of it, we had two really busy weeks and were quite exhausted, then we had to get up early in the morning to go to the yard, and we just hit another yacht. So going through this channel was really nothing we were looking forward to at this moment. Now we have to squeeze our huge boat through the channel you've just seen. And for the incident with the yacht, let's pretend it never happened.
just about to enter the, the way towards your, your ship road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, see you. The thing was that our radio wasn't working properly, so the yard decided to throw a handheld device over to our ship. And I really didn't see it coming, so I just heard something. And with all the expensive yachts around us, to hear something you do not know what it is, it's quite scary. But it was just a radio. Flying County, can you hear me? Over. Flying County here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, come here between the poles, the great poles. You can make your boat roster uh, over this way. Um, I have no boat roster. Oh, then it's just on uh, <laughs> At this point, we were already very exhausted and tired, but there was one last challenge. We had to get the boat from one side of the harbour basin to the other, where our slipway was. But the good thing is, as soon as we are on the cart, the yard takes over and taking the boat out should be very easy and we can finally relax. So we finally made it on the cart and now the time has come to take the boat out of the water. This is the most important tool of the yard, a big heavy industrial windlass. 
And even so, our ship is more on the larger and heavier side of the yard for the yard. This windlass can handle it with ease. You just drive on the cart. The guys of the yard make sure that you're absolutely in line with the center line of the cart and then they slowly start to pull you out. Then one more last check to see if everything is all right. And then way high and up she rises. What was meant to be an easy task turned out to be quite a challenge for us and the shipyard because our boat leans slightly to the port side and to go out of the water we have to be more or less level. So they tried to pull us level with all kind of different methods and at one point they even pulled the cart out of the tracks and had to get it back again. And in between each try we had to get off the cart so they could adjust it and then get back on the cart again. So it took quite a while. We later learned that usually when they take out fishing vessels, and that's what they do most of the time here to the yard, um, they just, if the fishing vessel is not um, level, they just put down one of the beams a bit and then they compensate for this and then they're level and then they can pull them out without any problems. After three tries getting out of the water, we're now waiting in the water for them to adjust the sled that pulls us out. And I'm really exhausted. I'm really, really exhausted at the moment. Since the boat was leaning over to port too much, they have to put us in the water again and they will adjust the sled. 
and pull us out again. And this will be the fourth try. <sighs> After six times, the yard eventually got us out on the hard. We left the dock at 8 a.m. and were on the hard at 2 p.m. Usually taking a ship out of the water takes about 30 minutes, but we were healing to the port side and that made it all very complicated. But I have to say that the yards really did a good job. They were very professional, always patient and did the best to pull the boat level. And we stayed focused the whole time, even though we were really tired. And in the end, we are on the heart and that's all that matters and we finally can relax. Now that we are finally out of the water, let me tell you about our plans for the time in the shipyard. We plan to spend one busy week on the hard. And together with the yard, we have planned the following tasks. New anodes and anti fouling removing all but one through hull and exchange the remaining one, exchange the backing of our stuffing box, removing an old rusty wastewater tank, and I'm really looking forward to that one. And last but not least, removing all the rusty paint of our ship and repainting the ship in a nice shiny new color. But more on that in an upcoming video. Well, quite a tough plan for just one week. And now that the boat is out of the water, let's have a look at the bottom of the ship before it is pressure washed. Feel free to leave a comment and tell us your opinion about the condition of the hull. This time we squeezed our huge boat through this very narrow channel. Then we maneuvered her from one side of the basin to the other. And we managed to take her out of the water not one, but six times. And now finally on the heart. So enough done for the day, the week, and even for the month if you ask me. All we want to do now is to lay back and watch the guys from the yard do all the work. Well, that's not gonna happen because we are on a very tight budget and we have to do all the prep work and everything we can do by ourselves. But it's just one week, so let's power through. 
Join us next time when the boat gets pressure washed and we finally see in which condition she actually is. If you don't want to miss it, then make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified when we publish the next video. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.